Big shout out to today's video sponsor, Linsol. Check out their fantastic deals in the links in the video description iPods are a thing of the past for many, though there are a fair few people out there still using and retrofitting parts to iPods. Most people just use their smartphones for audio these days, but not only do modern smartphones not have headphone ports, they don't have good ones. Adapters and digital players have been a thing for a while, I get that, but what if you wanted to carry around something that's in your earphone case for example, and it could adapt your phone, it could adapt your earphones, it could play music directly through micro SD, turn your IEMs and headphones into Bluetooth or the other way around. I mean, what if you could have one little device that did it all? And what if this device only came in at just over £100? I mean, would you buy that? Let me tell you more about the Shangling MO Pro in my review. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and yes, I'm still recovering from COVID, so I do apologize for the nasally voice, but today we are going to be talking about the Shangling MO Pro. This product was sent out by Linsol, so links in the description to that. However, this isn't a Shangling MO Pro sponsored video, and it's definitely not gonna be seen by the manufacturer or anyone else before you, so just keep that in mind. So, what is the Shangling MO Pro? Well, let's go over some quick fire specs and features. It's a tiny music player, Bluetooth transceiver and DAC, so it can connect bi-directionally to audio outputs or audio inputs, but also store music and play it through the microSD card slot, and also works as a wired DAC, just like, say, my Fio K5 Pro, so I could plug it into my computer and just run headphones through it. Linsol has this up on the website for around $130, which isn't that bad, but it does... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It only comes with the USB-C to A cable, it doesn't come with any other kind of cables, including one very important one. You see, the bottom of this thing has a 3.5mm port, which is fantastic because that's what we need to connect many IEMs and earphones, but it, it's capable of balanced. And that might sound crazy to you who, you know, know your audio, you can't go balanced to a 35 No, not quite, but they've made a proprietary adapter that allows you to go from 35 to 4.4 balanced, like in a little cable. The issue with that is they haven't included it in the box, which I think it, they, they've kind of missed a trick with that. They also haven't included a case. It is simply the Shangling MO Pro and a USB-C to USB-A cable. There's no clip, there's no case, and there's importantly no balanced adapter. Now I think if you're going to market this thing as a beautiful little device that can do balanced, you should include the ability for it to do balanced out of the box. And even if you had to raise the price by $20, make it $150, I think they just missed a trick there. And as you can probably imagine, I was not able to test out the balanced output because I wasn't sent this adapter with it, so I was just using 3.5mm connections. The build of it is very nice, let's not get away from that. It's metal and glass, it feels super high quality, it's got a nice density to it. You can get it in red, green and black, and I went with the green one, I think it looks rather dashing, and it is my preferred choice of the three. The screen is not crazy high resolution, but more than readable indoors and in the shade. It doesn't get crazy bright outside though, which could be a worry. That said, you just use the volume wheel for volume, and that's pretty much it. So the way I used this primarily was connecting it, uh, creating my IEMs a, a Bluetooth signal. This essentially means that I hook my IEMs right into the, the 3.5mm port, and it allows them to Bluetooth connect with my phone. Very handy to have because it means I can use my phone, you know, not be sort of tethered to it, but at the same time allow me to use decent quality IEMs. I use this thing primarily to connect to my ThinkPad. So my ThinkPad has a really bad 3.5mm port on it. It's just a bad DAC. It just, it does not sound good. It makes pretty much every IEM sound tinny and lifeless. So connecting this thing over the USB cable and then connecting my IEMs into it was the way that I used it a lot of the time. Now, this was kind of an okay experience, except for I had to download a driver and install that manually, and that kind of went, took a little while, and I had to do a few restarts, and it wasn't the most seamless process in the world, especially compared to other sort of DACs that I've used where you just plug it in and it works. Uh, I'm not sure why this is, but it did work. I mean, it, it didn't take many attempts. It was one attempt, but it was just quite a bit of restarting and everything. Went through just fine, and I had high quality audio on my ThinkPad, which was really nice, because I'm not used to that. I also use this a little bit to save some battery life on my phone by putting my main standard media library on the micro SD card and then hooking it up to sometimes IEMs, but a lot of the time actually the 3.5mm the port 
in the car so that when we're on long journeys, I can listen to music and it sounds decent. And at the same time, sometimes in Cornwall, we don't get the best mobile signal. So it's nice to have something local. And at the same time, again, because you, you're not reliant on an internet connection, the stream, there is no stream. So the quality can be as high quality as possible. And it allows for just a cleaner signal. I had some really good fun with the Shangling MO Pro, I must say. Uh, it wasn't just a little gimmick. It was actually quite useful sometimes because phones don't have the best battery life. So it is nice to just have something that's standalone and separate. Also allows you to use, like I said, my local library. And then when I wasn't using it for that, I could use it for something else. It's, it's like it always had a purpose. But, and here's the big but, would I recommend it to audiophiles? No. Would I recommend it to casual listeners? No. And here, here lies the problem. You see, most people aren't going to bother with anything like this. They're just going to use their phone. And for people who are more into the audio file space, they're going to buy something that's a bit better. Might cost another $100, but they'll get something that will have maybe a bigger battery, better screen, uh, easier interface to use. Maybe has that balance connector built into it or at least comes with the cable that you can use out of the box. There's a lot of stuff going on here that I think it just kind of skews and, and just doesn't allow the MO Pro to, to really, you know, land, uh, what's the phrase again? Hit the ground running. It's not able to do that because there's a caveat, you know, you've got to buy a clip or a case, you've got to buy the, the adapter and then suddenly you're spending a bit more money and could you really go out and just spend a, a little bit more and get something better? It's really hard to place it in the market because it just doesn't seem to have a spot. Now, you know, like I said, it was useful to have and I'm glad I have it, but I, I have to be brutally honest here. If I was going out and spending my own money, I would spend a bit more and get something more capable with the balanced connector built into it. Or I would just simply go with something like the BTR3K, which is about 50 to 60 pounds and allows me to do that whole Bluetooth connectivity thing with the car. And actually that thing, that thing has a two and a half mil balanced built into it. So yeah, I, a hard recommendation from me. I don't think I'm going to be able to recommend this one. One of the first products in a little while actually that hasn't blown my socks off. So links will be in the description to where you can have a look at some details and maybe buy the MO Pro if you want to, though I'm not going to push you to because, like I said, I don't think I really recommend it. If you're after that one particular thing that looks like a little iPod Nano and, you know, then go for it. But other than that, I'm not sure. Thank you all so much for watching and thanks to Linsol for sending this thing out. Again, links to them will be in the video description. Again, sorry for my nasally voice. Uh, it's going to go on for a little while, yeah, I think. So just get used to it. I mean, at least I'm filming in the daytime now, which means I can, you know, not do the little ASMR voice, which I've been doing for sort of six months to a year. It allows me to kind of open up a bit and, and be a bit more, you know, energetic in these videos, which I've been enjoying. So yeah, links to everything in the description, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks to my patrons for being continually supportive. Really does help the channel out. And uh, yeah, I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll catch you later. Cheers.